I, honestly, people just disengage with, with life and, 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 and they have their little spurts of when they would like to do something, but they don't have a track record of, of staying engaged with life in the past of, of continuously striving, consciously navigating their life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of The Formula, where we break down and explore the elements of health, wealth, happiness, and achievement with guests from all over the world, really with the purpose to find what the formula is for a meaningful, fulfilled life. I'm your host, Trevor Carlson, and I'm really excited to, uh, to be here today to share this interview with you with Andrew Farabee. Andrew is the founder of Knowledge for Men, and he's a three-time best-selling author. He's interviewed uh, some amazing people like Robert Greene, Steve Harvey, Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk. He's been published in all kinds of publications like Forbes, Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur. His really his purpose is to help men become stronger, more grounded men so they can have more success, freedom, and happiness in their lives. Kind of sounds a little bit familiar to our show. Really stumbled across Andrew's stuff on Quora where he posts quite a bit. I mean, he's had over 22 million people view his answers, which is it's insane to me. 22 million different people. Uh, that's, and I, I really enjoy a lot, of, a lot of the answers he provides and the insights that he gives from his own life. So really pumped to share this interview with him today. Well, let's hear a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Lady Boss. Lady Boss is the first global weight loss and support community for women. Their mission is to help women lose weight while loving themselves. They help women get their confidence back, improve the overall quality of their life, and change the health of their entire family. They do this through providing the best information, products, and services possible in fitness, nutrition, and accountability. Lady Boss. Over 1,309,573 women supported and counting. To sign up for Lady Boss, head to the sponsored products page on theformulapodcast.com. Now, back to the show. All right, so this week on The Formula, I have with me guest Andrew Fairby. Uh, he is the founder of knowledgeformen.com and a frequent contributor over on uh, Quora. That's how I, I discovered uh, Andrew's content, reading some of his, some of his answers about uh, personal development, business, uh, habits, routines, uh, all kinds of things like that. Andrew, thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by today. Yes, Trevor, it's good to be here. Quora is my little experiment. I've been having a lot of fun there. Yeah, that's it's been fun reading uh, reading a lot of the answers that you gave. I've I've enjoyed quite a quite a bit of them. Yeah, I find that you you really have to be a little different. You have to be a little outlandish on Quora. Like just to give someone a general response is not going to generate really any interest. And quite honestly, I'm only just speaking my truth. But I'll, but I realize that what I do is quite counterintuitive to what most people would assume is a good answer. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, a lot of the answers that you get on there are typically the same, like copy and pasted from, from the newest self-help book. Uh, and, and there's really not a lot of, a lot of depth to them, it feels like. But whenever I, I see any of your stuff, it seems like that you are speaking from a place of experience. We were talking before how you said, you know, you, you practice a lot of self-care, getting eight hours of sleep. And uh, I really want to jump into all this stuff, but but first I have uh, just a, a quick question for you, and that is, you know, you've been you've been running Knowledge for Men now for a few years, right? Uh, yeah, five six years. Five six years. And just just for context for our audience, why uh you know why why should why do they why should they listen to you when it comes to developing these habits, routines, and and processes to to becoming a high performer? Uh, sure. I started this whole journey really just after a breakup and I was in a lot of pain. I was lost. I was confused. I thought that I was never going to find love again. I thought that no woman would ever want to be with me. I thought that it was, I literally just like lost any chance of like having a future with a woman. <laughs> like that's just how low I was. And I was in a place where I was just crying every, every day. I couldn't get out of bed. And 
I remember one day I had this epiphany where I was, it was late at night, like in midnight or something. I had this epiphany where I was like, wow, like what if you use this pain as an opportunity and you used it to fuel you into something and all these dreams and ideas and hopes and goals that you've had in the past that you've thrown in the trash. What if you actually took those out of the trash and tried to do just one of them? And I literally got up out of bed like one, two in the morning or something and just started journaling like crazy, turned on my light. And then all of a sudden my alarm went off and it was time to go to work. And I called in sick. (laughs) I was like, this is way more exciting than going to work. And within a couple of weeks, I had quit my job and I had this full game plan of like what I would like my life to look like. And I was in complete like this. I was still in a very shocked state. Like I wouldn't advise this for someone to do to just quit your job and to go on this journey of what would end up being, uh, you know, one of the greatest journeys of my life of just personal development. Also, a lot of it had to do with like dating and, and relationships and social dynamics and really just pushing myself out of my comfort zone on a daily basis to the point where it just became the way that I lived my life and how I would live my life. And I started sharing that journey online. Uh, knowledge for men was just, I, I thought I was creating knowledge for myself. And so uh, that was just the domain that I ended up getting. And I started writing and sharing that content and creating a few videos here and there. And people just started listening. And I never really sat out and said like, hey, I'm going to build a business. Like I'm going to make uh, money doing this. Like I've identified a target market. I, I just literally just started whatever I was doing. I was just sharing that. And the blog would get millions of visits. I started a podcast because I wanted to share other people's journeys who, who've gone on something similar, some sort of pain and challenge and triumph and turning around and, and growing into a stronger man and women. I've interviewed a lot of women as well. And uh, I've done over 400 interviews. The podcast has 6 million downloads. Uh, people would start asking me like questions and questions. And it got to the point where I had to create some sort of filter in order to uh, be able to have a life. Otherwise, I was just helping people all day. And that filter was money, which was like, hey, I'll help you for, for X amount. And I've coached literally uh, th- through Knowledge for Men, like over a thousand guys. And we've had to this, to this day, like right now, like I have a coaching team, uh, who have, who I've like worked with. These are professional coaches who I've worked with and trained like kind of my way of thinking and the way that I go about goals. And we've helped hundreds and hundreds, uh, through that program as well. And, um, knowledge for men started, like I, I, I do remember checking $15, uh, going to the bank and cashing in $15 checks, and uh, being excited, those were like some of the best checks that I ever cashed in. And uh, and, t- and today, last year was our first seven figure year. We've already done seven figures this year, and um, it's been quite a journey. And I mean, there's there's a lot more into that mix, but that is, I don't know if that is exactly why you should listen to me, but that's that's what I have to offer. Yeah, no, I I think that's a pretty powerful story when when you are it's basically your example your your story your journey is the advice you're giving is stuff that you've already done already gone through yourself versus you know maybe you read something or or you uh, feel like this is the way you should do things you know what I mean yes yeah yeah I just have my experience and my lessons that I've learned through through the trenches yeah and and your your original story with the whole breakup thing um I can I can relate to uh, moments like that as well, and they are they are not fun, but it's it's correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it's almost how you use that uh, pain or that um, I guess you could call it an opportunity, <laughs> and it sounds like that's yeah. that's what you did. I think the the most grounded men in and even women are those that have experienced not the greatest successes, but those who have experienced the greatest amount of failures or that have hit rock bottom and were able to climb themselves out. Cause it's, it's that moment when you decide that you're not going to be at the bottom anymore and you're done with this and that you are going to improve no matter how hard or how long it takes. Like that journey is what will define you and men who and women have been through many serious breakups. They tend to be the more interesting people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I, that's an interesting I'll have to think about that because I'm I'm curious now who the most interesting people I know are if they've been through something like that. 
or just some great challenge and and uh they've, they've really overcome something i find right. them to be more interesting at least to me yeah i i would agree because it gives you i feel like it gives you character some some form of character and relatability uh you don't you haven't had everything cherry picked and handed to you so you understand what it's like to be on the other side yeah i think it, you you learn a lot of self-awareness about yourself when you've lost someone that you really love or perhaps for some, it could be like a business that you really loved or a career that you really loved or something that you just really loved. And it was, it, it was gone and it yeah. was taken from you or, or whatever. But that loss can, uh, really create a lot of self-awareness for you. Yeah. And we were talking before about why I ended up, uh, on this trip doing this digital nomad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah ridiculous I, thing that I'm, I'm doing. Inspired. Yeah, I'm inspired. I'm Trevor. Thanks. Thanks, man. I mean, I, I imagine if you decided you want to do it, you could do it as well. I, uh, <laughs> rewind eight months ago or so there, I, there was a very similar situation that you had where I, uh, I had been seeing someone and I was, you know, I always had this picture in my head that somebody would go with me when I left. And then when, when that didn't work out, I just, it was kind of this moment where I was like, oh man, I've literally tried to follow all the rules and do everything. Yeah. The way mm -hmm. I wanted to and, or the way I was quote unquote supposed to. And, um, and then when that fell apart, it was like, there was a level of pain and I just decided to focus it on hitting this goal. So, so that's yeah. a, it's kind of a relatable story to me. Now to get into the kind of the meat of the, of the episode. Um, so let's say that, you know, you, I'm assuming you've worked with a lot of men and women who've been in this type of situation before where either they are, either they've hit that point where they're in a lot of pain or let's just say they have a clean slate. And, you know, if you were to give them a step-by-step -step process to developing some high-performing habits, um, where would you start? I would start with asking this question right here, which is, what do you want? What do you really want without considering maybe what your friends or family or society is telling you to do or what they are doing and, and, and you're using that as a guideline, but really thinking back to what it is that you want. And maybe there were things that you used to tell yourself or things you used to want when you were younger that you've given up on or that you think is outlandish or silly. But I think you want to start with a clear direction that is actually in alignment with your values. Otherwise, you could go on a journey and you can follow all, all the right steps. But if it's really not you and all, along that journey, you feel out of alignment, you feel like you're headed towards the wrong destination, you know, then it's so easy for you to quit. It's so easy for resistance to prevent you from taking action consistently. And so I want to prevent that from happening by making sure that this is something that you want so that it can be a lot easier so that you're more like surfing to it'll of course be hard but if it's something that you want it's a lot easier to wake up and get out of bed and to grind and to work um but how can we also just turn this into something where it doesn't necessarily have to be work like uh i write books and to, to be honest you know I, I never grew up thinking that writing was something that I would ever really do. Um, my English teachers never said anything profound about my writing, but I wake up and I really enjoy writing. Like it really gets me out of bed in the morning and, uh, I've written several books. I've sold, uh, over 50,000 books and I never thought that that would be something for me, but I I'm right now working on a book and it is, uh, it's about dating and, uh, I'm so excited to do it. And, I'm able to do like, it's not work to me, but to someone else that would be very hard to someone else. Like if that's not what they want to do, like this is just not going to happen. And so how can we one, like make sure that this is something that you want to do. And two, do the projects and the activities that really light you up. And it's not that it's not going to be hard or there's not going to be challenges, but when you really want it, it's, it's much easier. Like it's much like, I just like to flow through the day rather than having all this resistance and all this like negative energy around a task. And of course there's things I don't like doing like editing and grammar and all this stuff, <laughs> like, yeah. but the process of it is, is much easier. And, and so the next thing that like, if you, once you focus on what you want, and you've identified the projects and the things that really light you up, 
you know, who are the people that are already doing it? Who are the people that have already been successful at it? And I would, I would start by modeling them. I mean, there's no, especially if you're just getting started, uh, if it's like, if you've been doing something and you're really good at it, I mean, even then you still want to surround yourself with people who are on a similar path as you. And so I always divide it by kind of like 30, 33%, 33%, 33%. So 33% of people that I surround myself with are typically above me in terms of like the life that I want. That's not necessarily financially, although that tends to be the case. So more like mentors, these men are typically older. Uh, they have much more experience with, uh, even relationships or in business and just handling chaos. People who can just like, you're kind of like complaining or whining about something and they just look at you like, dude, this is not, this is nothing. Um, and it really puts you at ease and kind of creates some perspective. The other 33% are people who are like along the journey with you. These are people who maybe are at similar kind of levels of, I don't know what just, it could be like in life or in, in business or where, however you want to gauge it. Cause I know we typically gauge money as like the barometer of success, but I, I like to also look at the other aspects of life and because there's a lot of people who are rich who are miserable or unhealthy and, and are sick, um, or have no relationships at all. So those other things are very important. And then other 33% of people are people that I'm constantly, um, sort of mentoring or helping or, or younger guys that are coming up. And those guys, you might think that they're sucking your time, but those guys provide so much value and energy into, into you. Cause they're just, they have so much vigor. They have so much like aliveness and they're so excited to start something. And it really helps me just kind of like, like, wow, like I want to have more of that too. Like I really, I miss that, you know, it brings it back because as you get older, I have noticed that, and I'm not, I'm not that old. I'm, I'm 31, but I, I do feel different from when I was 21. Um, and I have friends that are in their forties and fifties, um, that it gets, uh, harder and harder to stay engaged with life and to actually like want to put down a goal and, and yeah. actually make it happen. Like when you say engaged with life, what do you mean? To to not clock out. It's easy to clock out and just flow, which is basically like, you know, you just, you, you go to work, you just kind of do what you got to do. And then you come home and watch TV, and you get caught in routine and like, you're just aging and you're just losing momentum and you're not able to like really be conscious about where you're taking your life and taking strides towards actually creating it. And then also being able to overcome the challenges along that journey. I, honestly, people just disengage with, with life and, 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 and they have, they have little spurts of when they would like to do something, but they don't have a track record of, of staying engaged with life in the past of, of continuously striving, consciously navigating their life. Like for instance, you Trevor decided to pack up and move to Europe and it sounds like you've been there for several months and you're having an awesome time. And, and, you know, I would, that's, you know, an example of being engaged. Like you're, you've had an idea and you made it happen. Like you're actually living this idea that, that was just once in your head, you wrote it down and now you get to experience it. And I, I think as we get older, it just, it seems that men just get disengaged. And that is one of the reasons why, uh, you start going down a downward spiral, um, kind of these hopes and dreams that you once had become these sort of like vague ideas that you just think of, or you start watching other people as a spectator and you shift from being a player in life to just watching others play life. L literally like you're like, if life was a video game, like you've, you've, you've let, you've given your controller to someone else and you're just kind of watching someone play their game. Yeah. It's a, uh... There's so many, there's so many quotes and things that I've heard that uh, people smarter than me have said, like Joe Rogan said something along the lines of, you know, if, if, uh, if you imagine your life as a movie and you're, you're basically writing the story and you're the main character, what do you want to happen? Ideally And it's, I mean, how I ended up here is I want to, I want to live in different countries. I want to learn. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doubting I'll be fluent in a ton of languages, but I'd like to learn some of uh, a few others. And I, I would just like to see what other cultures are like around the world and, you know, get to know myself in the process. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's, you can, uh, there's some motivational speaker said it best. He was like, you can, you can, 
you're going to die either way. You can either die on the field or die in the bleachers and you, you really have, you really have a choice, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think traveling is, is one of the fastest ways to stay engaged. Like when, when people who are disengaged and then they do go on a trip or something, they typically love that trip so much because they were so engaged. They were so present. There was everything about that trip. They were, they were so happy to seize the day. They weren't sleeping in. They were, they were, they were excited to get everything they could out of that hour, out of that day, out of that restaurant, out of that trip, out of that drive, everything. They were just more alive. And so I think travel instantly kind of, kind of shocks you into uh, engagement. Yeah. Especially when no one speaks your, your language around you either. That probably helps a little bit. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure that you get a lot of people that you, you tell this to, and then they're like, yeah, that's great for you, Andrew. You're, you're 30, 31. Uh, I have all these other responsibilities. I have all this stuff going on. How am I supposed to be engaged when I have a family and kids and, and, you know, I have a job and responsibilities. Yeah, that that's even, I would say it's even easier for you because now you have a reason to be engaged. You have kids, you have a wife. These are people that you love to at the highest level. These are people that, that want to look up to you, that want you to lead the family. And if you disengage, you will, that family will not be as successful. Your, your pact, your family won't reach to the highest levels. If you as a man are not engaged with life, if you are not engaged in your relationships, if you're not engaged in the, the upbringing of your children. So, I mean, engagement doesn't have to be about like, quote unquote, success or finances or business. Um, although it can be, and I would recommend that those are good things, but you have mo- that man would have more reason to be engaged in life because he has, there's more at, at stake for him than myself. I don't have kids, but if I did, I would, I would want to be even more engaged. I would want to be more of a leader. I'd want to be, uh, I would want to be able to inspire him through my actions. I'd want to inspire him through what I do. So hopefully that would pass on to my children. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really valid point too, is, is your, your reason behind doing it is it becomes stronger when you have those, those, uh, larger commitments. I don't have children either, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that, that they're probably very important to, to people who are parents and they're a great driving factor. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have, okay. So you have your, your, your goal and you have, you know, you've surrounded yourself with, uh, people, your, your thirds, right? Your, your mentors, yeah. your, your, um, it's so important. Just, and, yes. Yep. And, and then you're, you're mentoring some other folks and, you know, you, you've become engaged. What's next? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but those first two parts, we cannot, we cannot reduce as a, it's like, okay, like what's next? Like <laughs> those two things will set you on the path. Like just by having those two things, like great things will happen. And if it takes someone weeks or months to figure out what they want, like that is okay. Like you don't have to figure that out in a 20 minute journal sesh, although you probably could. And, and surrounding yourself with the right people is, is also like a lifelong journey. Like I, I'm constantly growing my social network and really understanding that who you surround yourself with is, is like so, 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 so important. Uh, it can be to your success. It could be to your demise. And, uh, it's, you know, life and success is, is relationships, like so much beauty and, and success and financial rewards have come from the right people. Um, but what would be next would be it's now it's time to do like it's time to take action. But my version of taking action isn't isn't necessarily the same as I think others. I like on my calendar here, like I typically will just do about three things that are important um, for the day. And, uh, and that's it. And my 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 belief in that is that I'm not sprinting. I'm using time to my advantage. Um, which we all have some time, uh, cause what, what I'm trying to do is really uh, play the long game and, and really treat this like a marathon. Uh, I don't want to burn out that, that seems to be one of the, how people end up not being successful is really, they, they try something they have, they're all excited. It's, you know, anytime you create a goal, it's always really exciting at first you go all in and do all this and then you burn out and I don't want to burn out. I just, I want to be able to enjoy my life while I'm on my journey. And that requires that I don't go, you know, work 12, 14 hour days on one specific goal that is only business. Like I also want to work on my health. 
I also want to have time to be able to go to the gym, to be able to hang out in the steam room, to be able to get a massage, to be able to get in the sun, to be able to ride my bike along the bay. Those things are equally as important to me as working on a book or as working on a product or, 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 you know, hiring the right people. Uh, if I'm not taken care of, and if I don't feel satisfied along the journey, then I'm not going to do the journey and then you'll give up and then you'll quit because this was unsatisfying and you'll relate a lot of pain and suffering to setting goals. So I always want to factor in fun things into my life such as a, like lifestyle first sort of approach rather than like business and money first. And then whatever's left, I'll, uh, I'll enjoy my life. And, um, this took me some time to really realize, but, uh, if, if you aren't enjoying your life, then when you finally do, if you do hit that goal, then you'll be, you'll be, you'll be miserable because if you really look back how you've been living your life and the habits that you've created to just be a workaholic, um, you could be b- borderline like depressed, but you reached your goal. But like a lot of those habits that a lot of these people preach, if you look at it, it, it could be closely related to uh, just someone who's suffering is, is another way to look at it. And even people, you know, talk about it. You know, they say like, you know, I, I'm willing to suffer for this goal. And there is a level of suffering that, that might have to be had. But I don't think you need to be on the brink of like mental breakdown to achieve your goals. I think that uh, if you have a, a, a longer approach, one, I won't give up. OK, so that right away, like I'll, I'm, I'm likely to hit that goal eventually. And two, I'm enjoying my life. So I'm actually like, and you know, I'm invigorated when I'm with friends. Uh, my relationships aren't necessarily suffering. I can make all the events and I don't miss things that are important to me, uh, with my, with my, with my friends or with my family or significant other. And, um, I don't take out all my stress on my partner, which it seems like most people can, can hit their goal. But at the end of it, their partner had to, had to really suffer with you, um, along that journey. And I don't think that's necessarily fair. So my approach is, is to enjoy your life and and to really create, design the life that you would like, uh, now and try and live it as much as possible while you take small action steps towards your goals. And, uh, what happens is really interesting is you no longer feel that once I achieve this goal, then I can have, I can do those things. What happens is you're already living like a really cool life or at least making progress towards that. And then you also got to hit your goal. And so it's just, it, it, it's more sustainable and we have to understand too, that life is short. And if you're just, just focused on goal achievement and, and, and that is it, um, like you're, you're, I, th- I think you're, you would look back and you would, you would just kind of like wonder why you did that. If you were 20, 30 years from now, or, you know, if you were laying down on your deathbed, you would, you would wonder why you sacrificed your twenties or your thirties or your forties, uh, in the pursuit of a goal because of some guy who, who, if, who would probably qualify as being clinically, um, psychotic or a sociopath. And he's just because he has a following, um, and other sociopaths follow him, then it doesn't mean that that's for you. And that's why it's so important to really dig in and figure out what it is that you want. But that's where I would start. And that's, that's kind of my approach to, um, how I take action and, and, and live my life while I'm in the pursuit of some greater goals. Yeah. And there's, you made so many great points there. I wanted, I wanted to chime in, but you were on a roll. So I was, I was letting you, I was letting you continue, but it's, you know, when it comes to habit building, it's, you know, can you just, can you do something so small and simple on a daily basis? As simple as, you know, if you want to start running, can you run around, run around the block for the next week every day, you know, and then from there, two blocks and then four and 10. Uh, and then it's, yeah, I don't know. There's, yeah, there's so much to that though, where it's about, it's about designing the, the life instead of, you know, trying to accomplish a goal because I feel like that there's this picture that people have when they're chasing a goal that once they hit this milestone, then everything that they've been dreaming of will come true. It's the same thing with people who, in in my opinion, uh, wait until retirement to travel and to then go see the world or go do that thing, um, that they've been wanting to do for the last or working towards for the last 40 years. I feel like it's all the same type of, um, (laughs) what's the word I'm looking for? It's like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow instead of like designing your life to, 
to have a piece, a small piece of it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're also more effective with your time. So if I'm only going to do three things today, I'll do those three things really well. And I'm not, I'm not just, it's not low quality work. There's, there's no point in working 12 hours if after four or five or even six or seven, whatever your cutoff point is, is anything after that is just, you're really just getting diminishing returns on the quality of work, or you're actually just hurting your business by making bad decisions or, or whatever it is that you're working on, or you're writing, you're just writing sloppy and you're going to delete it anyways. But, but to be really effective, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily require time to be effective at what you do. And to, if, if you are an entrepreneur, not to necessarily view your life as if, uh, you have to work eight to 10 hours because that is what, uh, you know, if you have a nine to five job, like that's just kind of what is designed like by, you know, a business owner to, to, to maximize the time that, uh, that a worker would work. Uh, but as an entrepreneur, if you, if that is in your case or you're in control of your time, um, I think that was a huge epiphany for me was understanding that you do not have to work eight to 10 hours a day in order to get high quality work done. Plus, if you're living your life really well, you're when you do work, you'll be excited, you'll be thrilled about it. And you're like, you're likely to, to have better quality work because you're coming at your work with, with good positive energy. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think when you have that, when you have the rest of your life, feeding your your work too you tend to have more more energy more focus the time that you're spending at work is much more valuable instead of i mean i've been there and i'm sure that that you've been there as well where you you know you push yourself really hard for a period of time and then you're like i i worked 12 hours today but the last four hours i actually can't remember (laughs) what i what i got done i just Absolutely. I was, yeah. I was grinding it out. <laughs> like, what did you hours. really, what did you really accomplish? And you know, at the end of that 12, 14 hour, I mean, I've done that. I'm not saying that like I've, I've always been this way. I'm the way, the re, the way that I am is as a result of used to being the guy who would work 12 hour days as like the regular. And then the occasional 18, like that, that was where I was. And I am fully aware how to do that. But I, after a certain point, uh, it just, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like life is too short. And uh, if we live to be a thousand, then I think that would make sense to have days like that because there's going to be a lot of time in your life, but we don't. And, um, well, I, I, your, the, your healthy active years are, are not 80 years. It's, it's really from, you know, basically 20 to, to 60. <laughs> it's yeah. really 40, 40 years of like really good, like, uh, work. And I would, I would also argue that, you know, the first, you know, in your twenties, you kind of don't know what you're doing, even though you're working hard. And then in your sixties, you're probably, you're probably diminishing in terms of quality anyway. So you might really just have like 25 years of like really good work to do. So I, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to spend all my time, um, suffering, but I do want to create high quality work that makes a great impact and obviously does generate income so that I can definitely fuel a uh, greater work for the coming years. Yeah. So let's say, let's say this person you're working with has, has followed your formula so far. They, you know, um, they've covered all the bases they're now doing and, you know, things come up along the way. So, so what advice do you have to this person as they're pursuing, pursuing their, their goal and finding balance? Mm-hmm. Uh, so something comes up along the way, like a challenge or a setback. So we've set it up pretty good at this point, because if, if this is something that you really want to do and it's aligned with you, it's going to be a lot easier to overcome the setback. So I'd ask this person to like really remind yourself why you're doing this to really go back to that period when you were writing that goal down and what it meant to you and, and how it would feel for you to actually achieve that. And uh, if it is in alignment with you, I, I would argue that it's it's significantly easier to overcome the challenges. And the challenges aren't even necessarily viewed as challenges. They're just viewed as a part of the journey. They're not really viewed as like, why is this happening to me? You know, victim mentality. But it's just like, yes, this is a part of it. I want it. Let's go. It's like an MMA fighter who wants to be an MMA fighter. He knows he's going to get punched a lot. He, he doesn't think that this is not going to happen. Like he acknowledges that this is a part of the journey. I'm going to get tapped out and beat up a lot. Or someone, I could actually see the Navy SEAL uh, station here in, on the West in San Diego. And I could see these guys and, um, they know that going through the buds, the, 
um, the Navy SEAL sort of boot camp uh, Hell Week period is uh, it's going to be very hard. It's going to push them to their limits, and so they're just aware of it, and it's it's viewed as a part of the journey, not so much this this outside force that is uh, something that is unforeseen. And I think that 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 mindset really keeps you engaged with the daily activities and the daily struggles. However, this is the next step was also like surrounding yourself with the right people. And this is really where like those mentors are going to come into play and and having those good relationships. Like it's too simple. Like we all heard the quote, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with by Jim Rohn. And it's too simple and it's often overlooked. But I can't tell you how many times that when I'm in a really tough situation that just having a phone call with one of these old, like not a guy who gives good advice, but a guy who has like battle earned wisdom. Mm -hmm. And and there's a difference between a guy who's like a seeker who like knows a lot and, and, and does take action and, uh, versus someone who has like real wisdom and they can speak like a Yoda. And, uh, these guys will be able to really help you, um, just dumb down the journey, not the journey, dumb down your challenge or setback and give you advice to keep going. Now, the the next step is to uh, make sure that you're also living uh, the life that you want. And and if you are, you're you're just in a much healthier state to handle the challenges. Like these little setbacks, like you're you're like ready to go. It's not like you've been starving. Like you're you're under sleep. Like you're just not capable of handling a challenge. So by taking care of yourself and having good relationships and really your life is feeling good, these challenges just get squatted. And, and so it allows you to really just keep moving forward. And then the next one is obviously take small actions daily and to not view the challenges as like it's just clouding and overwhelming your life, but that it's just a very small part of your life. And with time and by taking the right action steps consistently, you will overcome it. You will overcome whatever challenge is thrown at you. And then at the end of the day, also just understand that this is fun. This is a part of the journey. This is supposed to happen. I'm having a lot of fun. There's nothing to worry about here. I'm not, there's not a gun at my head right now. There's no real fear here where I'm threatened and I have no way of recovering. And, uh, a lot of these challenges is just like kind of reptilian brain telling us that we're going to die or like, we're not going to be able to survive this. Or like we instantly think worst case scenario. Um, and, and that's why, you know, all these other things I've shared, it really brings things into perspective and it's just like, okay, just keep going. Like this isn't significant. I can do this. I can handle this. And this is fun. This is a part of the journey. So that's how I would handle the challenges. And I'm going through challenges every day, like every day there's challenges, but it's a part of the journey. It's fun. It's exciting. And I mean, there's, there's no, you, the challenges are what make you grow. If, if there's no challenge on the journey, then your journey is like too simple. It's like, it's too easy. You're not really striving for something that is really, um, kind of pushing you to the edge of your comfort zone. Yeah. And I would, I would add two things personally that I've found when, when I run into obstacles and especially when I'm struggling with them or feeling like feeling uh, defeated is not the right word, but when you're just when you just feel like you're, you're running uphill and that's, uh, you know, there typically I found that maybe there's a negative uh, relationship that I have, some type of a negative influence that's, um, taking up much more space than necessary. And a great, yeah. great lesson I've learned since I've been traveling is that there's millions of amazing people around the world. And if somebody's causing you that type of stress or holding, you feel as if your relationship with them is holding you back, then you don't have to have them in your life. Yes, I, I 100% agree. I think that there is a, sometimes these challenges that are coming up in our lives are sometimes a result of just the energy that we're getting from, from other people. So yeah, quality relationships mm -hmm. is so important. Yeah. And then the second one was just, you know, you could be chasing the wrong goal as well. Right. Cause I've, right. I'm, I can, I can speak from experience when, when I'm pursuing something and something comes up and it's, and I'm pursuing the right thing. It's just, you're just like, oh, all right, well, I guess I'm just going to take care of this. But if it's yep. not the right thing and something comes up, you just are, you just are like, okay, I'm doing this thing. And now this BS came up that I have to deal with. And it's, and it's just a lot, 
easier to get held back when it's not something that you truly care about. Absolutely. Yep. It's so important to really ask that question. What do you really want? And because that's going to set you on the path and you're going to build all this foundation blocks. And, and if it's not the right path, then you're really building yourself on a shaky foundation because the foundation is like, is this in alignment with what you want? And so that does bring an interesting point up, which is like, how would someone differentiate between like, is this what I really want? Or am I just facing resistance? And I'm not sure, like, <laughs> you know, it, you know, maybe I just don't like resistance. And, um, I think that's when you really have a value check and, uh, take a look at your values and, and if the goal is in alignment with that and you feel drawn towards it still like that sort that sort of end goal. And there are more days that you have fun than, uh, days where you're not like, that's one way of looking at it. Like, are, are, do you, you know, if you look at the last 30 days, was it enjoyable or was it, was it hell? <laughs> yeah. And uh, if it's hell, then like there's something here that you need to pay attention to. Um, this might not be something for you. Uh, but if you, most of those days were enjoyable and you foresee that this is just a, a, you know, a challenge or a hiccup along that journey, then then definitely sail forward. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It's uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, now I lost I lost the point I was going to make because you keep making all these great points and I want to I want to play off of it and then you make another one and I'm like ah oh, shit <laughs> now 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 I have to remember them both but um yeah and I so so you, really it's it's a really a personal thing to know whether you're in alignment or not with with what you want and it's a lot of it's just taking the time to spend some time alone and to and to think about it and I, with with all the distractions that there are today it's easy to be you know. It's easy to, yeah, it's easy to not give yourself that time. You, I mean, you got your phone, computer, um, everything wants your attention, but you really needed to take that time, take a walk, do a journal session, whatever it is, whatever it is for you and figure out what those things are. Otherwise you could, you know, you could find out, find out that you get this goal and it wasn't something you even wanted in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah. That's huge right there. Just really knowing if this is it and uh, the self-awareness piece to know, like I think traveling is a great way of discovering yourself because you have to like almost reinvent, uh, you have to figure out so much like, Hey, the money, the currency, the language, like, you know, even like, where do I pee? Like <laughs> everything, everything is like, you know, you have to figure it out. And, and there's a lot that you learn along about yourself in that. And, uh, so, the self-awareness is huge. Yeah. Turns out when you, you want to, uh, take a leak overseas, you have to have coins on you because you have to pay to get into every bathroom possible. So I've learned wow. that. I learned, heard that. Yeah. I've learned that the, uh, uh, hard way, I guess you could say, <laughs> uh, just running between locations. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a great way to get to know yourself. So, you know, as, as they've overcome whatever these challenges are and they're kind of coming out of it, they're, they're achieving their goal. Are, is there anything else that you would, any other words of advice that you would give, uh, give this person? Yeah. But to have fun on that journey is, is to have as much fun as possible because that's the whole point of this is like, if, if you spend all your time, like focused on goal achievement and just like so hard on yourself about reaching a goal and that if you don't hit that goal, then you're a loser and you're, you know, you're comparing yourself to the most successful people on, on social media, like Instagram, and you're seeing everyone's highlight reels and you're feeling like you're just so low and hard on yourself. But at, at the end of the day, like if, if you're having fun on that journey, like you're winning. Okay. Because most people are not, most people are just posting just the the best parts of their lives and you're not seeing the full picture. You're not seeing all the challenges and struggles that they're going through to achieve those pictures. Yeah. And, uh, I, I definitely have a struggle with comparison and, and have really struggled with it. But I, but if you're having fun, like that is the, that is the best way to ensure that you're enjoying your life and you're, you're on the right track. And that like, if you're laughing and having fun more than, then you're not, um, you're doing good. Like you want to look back at your life or at least on the last year of your life and it, it should be an enjoyable experience because at the end of the day, like that's it. Like that is winning. The whole point of, you know, reaching these goals and stuff is so that you can allow fun to happen hopefully after, right? Like people want to hit a certain milestone in their business. They think it's going to allow them to have more money, to have more fun, to have more significance and respect and, and those sort of things. And so I would, I would challenge you to give a lot of those things to yourself now. So don't seek validation from people. Don't be approval seeking people like give it to yourself. Like you approve of you. Like you're the most important person, uh, 
I know that could be selfish or uh, it could be viewed the wrong way, but I do believe that when you are fully the strongest version of yourself, like you're able to put out your best work, you're able to be there and be stronger for the people that you love and care about. So give it to yourself, you know, allow yourself, like let go of the negative energy and allow yourself to be happy today to validate yourself. It should only come from you and to give yourself the, the respect and, and not seek it from other people. I think so many people are chasing goals because they're chasing some sort of validation. It's an ego, it's an egoic goal that is driving them to be better than others, to compare themselves, to climb up the comparison ladder. And so I'm not saying, and I'm not someone who's against success. I'm not against making money. I, I, I'm what I am for is not sacrificing your life in the hopes of making other people happy. I really want and what I you know, talk about here, I'm wearing my t-shirt here, Grounded, is going through life, having fun, making it enjoyable, enjoying the journey that is in alignment uniquely to your own goals and, and, and values and, and achieving them. But you don't look back and say, I, I, I had to suffer and waste you know, a decades of my life. Like you really got to live your life because at the end of the day, like that is what is most important. That's, that's success to me someone who has a smile on their face along the journey and they can laugh at the challenges. Yeah, I don't think I could have said that better. So that that pretty much wraps up the the main part of our show. I'm not even going to comment on that cuz that was such a <laughs> you made such a great uh, a great closing statement there. So if anybody if anybody wants to, you know, follow up with you or read any of your articles or listen to your podcast, uh, how would they do so? I think just go to knowledgeformen.com. I think you can find everything there. And uh, yeah, if, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap for this week's show. Thank you for taking the time to, uh, to sit down and listen to our interview with Andrew Faraby. And if you'd like to check out any of his books or check out his website, knowledgeformen.com, or even check out his Quora profile, we've put all those links into the show notes. So please go ahead and uh, check those out if you feel like you'd get some value from reading uh, some of his work. Now, if I can ask a quick favor from you, it would be that you would open up your podcast app, whether that's iTunes uh, or Stitcher, whatever it is, and leave us a quick review. Let us know what you think of the show. And uh, that really helps us to rise up in the podcast rankings and to help people like you find our show. So if you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if it's, a, if it's a great interview or it's a little funny, I might actually read it at the end of the show. So really appreciate that and uh, looking forward to seeing those, more of those reviews come in. That's a wrap for this week's show. I'm your host, Trevor Carlson, and I look forward to you tuning in next time. This episode of The Formula was produced by Helix Academy, and the music was provided by the artists known as Moods. Make sure and check them out on Facebook or Spotify. That's M-O-O-D-S.